and the loved ones in Jesus' precious name. Yes. Thank you for touching Sister Suki, bringing her through that three hours surgery. Lord, she's called me about three hours ago. Let me know she's okay. You know, she sent a picture uh, that it was on the news channel. How many of y'all saw that picture on 23? Man, I don't see how anybody could have made it out of that accident alive. It crushed the little pickup she had. Flipped it and just crushed it. The devil tried to kill her. But he couldn't do it. Hallelujah. Pray that God give her a speed of recovery yes. from all of this. A speed of recovery. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless. Bless in Jesus' name. What was I praying for you? For your mother, okay. Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Not hold you long at all tonight. But uh, I have a reason for pushing myself like I'm doing. Going to Tulsa here. And uh, the Lord knows. Yeah. The Lord knows. I want you to uh, turn with me. Thank you, Jesus. Let's read a uh, scripture over here in Ecclesiastes. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. And uh, let's start at verse 1. Let's just read a few of those. I'm not going to read too many from there, but Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and uh, verse 1. To everything there is a season. To everything. How many of y'all believe? To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. And a time to every purpose. You know, there's a season for revival in it. There's a season to park yourself and to uh, seek God. Just like there's a time for these eagles to uh, at times, you know, we have a white-faced eagle. He lives over here. comes. I have seen him in the past year but I watched him every year he comes and uh, there's a big old dead tree across the road over there and he comes over there and uh, for years my wife and I would watch him and he comes and he renews himself he gets his strength back all of his old feathers, he take his beak and pluck out the old feathers until uh, new feathers come in. Take that old beak and he just rub it against the stone somewhere until that old beak comes off. And he's forced to go into a fast. And during the time he's in that fast, I hear that other eagles comes by and they gives him, you know, squirrel or rabbit or something. Gives him, you know, eagles like fresh meat. And until uh, they are, uh, till he's able to regather his strength and he can live after he go through that uh, renewal period, he can live another 10 or 15 years. And if he, he learned that process and he renews himself, 
these eagles renew themselves every so many years. And uh, all the claws and all the beaks and all the feathers, everything is brand new again. And they get strength and fresh, swift energy. And they're able to once again mount up. Like the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, you shall mount up with wings like eagles. But there has to be a period of waiting on God. A period of coming aside and seeking Him. And uh, just wait in His presence. You feel that presence come in. I feel it now. Just talking about it. And that's a trouble a lot of different people have. They don't have time to wait. In the book of Acts, they went and they waited. Jesus said, tarry until you be endured with power, clothed with power from on high. And that's what God wants us to do is tarry, wait upon him until he renews and restores and restrengthens, give us what we need to Face the devil out there. Yeah. Don't, don't fool yourself. There's definitely an evil spirit. There's a season to search our hearts, to come aside, to wait on God, break up some ground. You know, do some fasting. Praying every day. Taking a certain time and reading that Bible. Every day, if it's just 30 minutes, read it. 45 minutes, an hour. Give God his time. Give God, you know, y'all believe in paying tithes. Y'all believe in paying tithes in your time. You know, two hours and 40 minutes is your time that you're supposed to give to God every day. <laughs> you know, 24 hours. You're tired. Huh? An hour in praying. An hour reading the Bible. Maybe 40 minutes of worshiping and just meditation waiting upon it. Or uh, however. But, you know, sometimes I can't spend no two hours and 40. You can spend two hours and 45 minutes on front television. Come on. You can spend two hours and 45 minutes on that Facebook. You can spend two hours and 40 minutes on that job. Come on. <laughs> but we can't give God. Give God some time. I'm not telling you to give him two hours and forty minutes. Give him two hours and thirty-nine minutes. Yeah. Give him satisfied with that. <laughs> but give the more time you give him, the more you want to give him time. And you find yourself, you know, getting stronger, getting wiser. And God will put you in position for people to come to you and ask for advice and ask for prayer and ask for help. And he'll be, he'll sharpen up your swords, he'll sharpen up your tools, and he'll have you ready for battle, ready to pray the prayer of faith, ready to lay hands on the sick, ready to drive these LGBTQ spirits out of folks, ready to get out there and give people the good news. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is good news. Good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't it? And read that again. There's a time. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under a the sun. time to every purpose under heaven. Uh huh. A time to be born. Time to be born. That's a time to. That's a time to be for something to be born in us. For this last anointed move of God, there's a time for this to be brought up, to be birthed into the world. There's a time for this to be born, and I believe we're in that time. I believe we're in that season. I believe we have a purpose. 
Uh huh. Time to be born. And a time to die. And a time for flesh to die. Self to die. Selfish ways to die. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Go ahead. A time to plant? We need to plant. That's what during these 40 days, we need to be planting the word in us. Planting prayer deep in our heart. And, and prayer will plant that word. You know, when you pray, the word will be planted. The word will hide itself in your heart, in your spirit. And when you need to speak a word in season, the Holy Ghost will bring it to your, to your, uh, memory because you're planted it now. What you planted now is going to be used. It's going to, it's going to spring up as a testimony, as a witness. It's going to spring up as a light. It's going to spring up to give people wisdom, to give people answers. Y'all believe that? Read yes. some more. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. And there's a time we need to pluck up something that was planted that shouldn't have been planted. Huh? And yeah, there's so much uncleanness and nudity and evil out there. And uh, if you're not careful, the devil plants something, you know, just by you mixing and mingling, you know, uh, watching something and listening to something. You ever had a the devil to plant some kind of world that's song in your mind? Yes. And you can find yourself, what am I doing singing? And something you heard, Satan planted something. While man slept, the enemy came and planted. While we sleep spiritually, the devil can come and plant. Where did this come from? Uh, a pain, a sickness, uh, wake up with an ache, a stomach, an ache or something. The devil plants things while we're unaware. That's why he said, watch. Be vigilant in prayer. Sober. Alert. Don't let the devil, don't let him plant. He's like a roaring lion out there seeking to divide. And he's got his demons, his agents out there trying to plant lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, trying to plant every corrupted uh, thought and every damnable seed that he can. I didn't mean to go in the order there, but go ahead. A time to kill. Time to heal. And a time to heal. A time to what? Kill. Kill. And a time to heal. And a time to heal. Time to kill. Kill them spirits. Kill that desire that's unholy. Kill them thoughts that's not right. Kill whatever that was that has creeped into your life. Kill it. Kill it with the word. Do prayer. Run for fasting. Seeking God. Kill those unholy desires. Kill them unholy uh, things that somehow, while we slept, crept in. Yes. Time to kill. And a time to heal. Time to heal. A time to break down. Time to break down. And a time to build up. There's a time to build up. We. That's what we're trying to do is build up right now. Yes, we can go on and read some more of that. But we'll stop right there. But the point of it is a time. Let's read another scripture. I believe it's in Daniel. Maybe I, I, I didn't write it down. I wish I had wrote it down. Daniel chapter 7. And uh, make it verse 25. I, I'm hoping... That I am uh, correct on this. Daniel chapter 7, maybe verse 25. The time came when the saints possessed the kingdom of God. Find that scripture. Daniel, maybe chapter 9, or chapter, one of those chapters. The time came. Huh? Eight. Did somebody say chapter eight? Chapter seven and verse eighteen. Read that. 
But the saints of the Most High. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Shall take. You know, I read in the gospel what Jesus said that the kingdom of God suffers violence. Why? Because the devil is threatened with the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God means when God comes to rule in us, when God comes to reign in us, when the king comes to sit upon his throne of our hearts and to begin to exercise his dominion and his authority and his rule in us over what? Over darkness, over evil, over sin, over sickness, over demons, over cancer, over all of these powers that comes to corrupt, that comes to shield, that comes to destroy, that comes to drag us to hell, that comes to bind our children and to bring addictions upon their bodies and upon their minds. Yes. Huh? The saints of the Most High shall take and possess the kingdom. And I mean the time has come. It's right there. If there's a time for everything, there's a time for revival. There's a time for a restoration. There's a time, as I was saying this morning, for that which the canker worm have eaten to be restored. That which the locusts and the pummel worm and the caterpillar have eaten. There's a time for it to be restored. Well, we've had a time for drought. We've had a time for formalities. We've had a time for all this other false. There's a time for the real to come on the scene. There's a time for an uh, outpouring. That third outpouring that I was talking about this morning. Oh, then Joel speaks about the former rain, then the rain, now the latter rain. The time has come in this latter rain is when we're going to see uh, the kingdom of God be ushered in. He said the kingdom of God coming with power, and it's coming with dominion, and it's coming with a dominion over the devil. Well, I believe it. Amen. Don't you Right here. Let's read it. Read Matthew chapter four, chapter four, and verse twenty-three. You know the Bible. John says, "One cometh braver than I. The lace of whose shoes are not worthy to shoot and untie. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire." But the kingdom of God is coming and God is fixing to bring in a kingdom. A kingdom people. Read that. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Jesus went about all Galilee. Teaching in their synagogues. Teaching in the synagogues. Preaching the gospel of and the kingdom. Preaching. There it is right there. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the reign of the kingdom, the rule, the dominion of the kingdom. The kingdom of Satan had been gone, had been established in, in man's bodies through diseases and through sicknesses and through evil spirits and through false doctrine. The kingdom of Satan was ruling, reigning. Oh, now it seemed like it, it was 4,000 years since the fall of Adam and Eve. The kingdom of Satan was ruling having dominion, having power, killing, stealing, destroying. But now, Jesus is bringing them good news. The devil has been running your life, but I got good news. He's fixing to stop. He's fixing to be driven out. His evil, evil is fixing to come to an end. Okay, finish reading that. And healing all manner of sickness. And healing all manner of sickness. And all manner of diseases. All sicknesses. All diseases. He's coming back for a church without sickness. Without disease. Without spot. Without blemish. Without, that's what these spots and blemishes. Sicknesses. Diseases. And all of these things. 
a church, he's coming back for it. Jesus says, church is going to leave here healthy. They're going to leave here with being made whole. They're going to leave here without all of these things that the devil has crippled and has corrupted and has put upon us. They're not going to leave here with diseases. They're not going to leave here with pain. But he's coming back for a church and that church is he's going to give that church dominion and give that church power to stand up against these demonic powers that's out there stealing and killing and destroying. How do you know, Brother Blue? Because the Bible says God anointed Jesus, the Master, with power and with the Holy Ghost, went about doing good, healing all of that was sick and all of that was oppressed of the devil. God was with him. This is why everywhere he went, demons come crying out with loud voices and said, Leave us alone. What are we to do with thee, Jesus of God? What is life to do with darkness? Leave us alone, Jesus said. Come out, you foul spirit. Come out, you perverse spirit. Come out, you gay spirit. You sodomite spirit. Come out. You infirmity. Amen. You transgender. You bisexual. Well, y'all quit laughing. Y'all be yo. Oh, yo. Y'all on the side of these transgenders. Come out. Remember? Yes. And then when, when he, uh, he, he, he made them male and transgender and bisexual and gay and homosexual and didn't he? Uh -huh. uh, the enemy so messy. While man slept, the devil come in and brought all this perverted stuff in. That's what the Bible says. While man slept, a new enemy come in and got men thinking that he was born to be a woman. Got a woman thinking she's born to be a man. Right. An enemy has perverted people's mind. God, from the beginning, it wasn't. Was it? From the beginning, it wasn't so. God made them what? God made them what? When did he do that? From the beginning. Male and female. Well, you go find out. God is not the author of confusion. You're not going to have all that stuff in heaven. Only. And, 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 and when we get to heaven, we're going to be as the angels. Some of y'all don't want to hear that. <laughs> but we're going to be elevated above this human nature, above these human cravings, above these human feelings and things. We're going to be elevated in a much higher level, in a much higher realm. We're not going to have uh, the cravings and the desires that we have now in this physical realm, in this physical body. We're going to have a much more greater uh, elevated realm in God where we don't have to have a lot of these things that we think we have to have now. Right. Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Finish reading that. Start again at Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Jesus went about all Galilee. Teaching in their synagogues. Teaching. See, we got to put the word in them. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Teaching, preparing them. Put the word in them. This is why the blind man came and said, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. Uh, you know, the I mean, the man over there uh, in the 8th chapter of Matthew, the leper came with that leprosy all over his body, wasting away. He came, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. How did he know? You know, if you will, how did he know that God had the power to do it? How did he know Jesus he had, somebody had told him, somebody had told him how God anointed Jesus with the power and with the Holy Ghost and how that he went about doing good, healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed of the devil. Somewhere he read 
what Jesus spoke in it. Isaiah 35, that, that was, when the Messiah comes, he's going to cleanse the lepers. He's going to heal the sick. The, the cripples are going to be made whole. Someone read that to him, and he believed it, and now he heard that the Messiah had come. And now he said, Lord, if you will, you can cleanse me. You can make me whole. Lord. Yes. yes. Kingdom of God came and began to reign and rule in man. Hallelujah. Let's read a little bit of that. Matthew chapter 8. Let's read a little bit of that. Young man, go out and preach. This is what you're going to preach. Amen. You're not going to be preaching about what happened to John the Baptist here. That ain't going to hear nobody. Right. Oh, we're going to preach this right here. We're going to preach this right here. Matthew 8, verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into, into Capernaum, yes. there came unto him a centurion. Read it. Not your preaching. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, Jesus was entered into Capernaum. There came unto him a centurion. Now come unto him a centurion. Beseeching him. Huh? Beseeching him. Say, Lord, my servant is at home, sick, suffering, can't move, he's dying, have mercy. I heard about what you can do. Uh huh. Grievously tormented. Grievously. He's in pain right now. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto him, Jesus said unto him, I will come. That's what he's telling you. I'll come through my word. I'll come. Through my anointing. I send my word. I'll come through my spirit. I'll come in here. I am the Lord and I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will. I am that that I am. And I have come down to deliver my people. I change not. Word don't change. Go ahead. And the satirian answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof. The satirian said, I'm not worthy. But speak. I'm, not, I'm not a Jew. And I know you've been sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be here. You ain't, my, my, my. Look at him. He said, All you got to do is just speak the word. Yeah. Here was a man from another. Uh, Another faith, a man that was a centurion, a Roman soldier, said, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. Just say the word. He said his word. My word is spirit. My word is life. My word is quick. My word is powerful. My word is sharper. Then it is two of the word. Two of the sword. I will watch over my word. I will bring it to pass. Say the word. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Man. It was the word that created us. It was the word that created the sun, the moon, the stars. It was the word that created everything. There was nothing made without him. In the beginning was the word. And the word made all things. If the word made us, it can fix us. It can restore us. It can create what needs to be created. It can take out what needs to be taken out. Thank God. His word, His word is still effective. His word will not fail. I will watch over my word. I will pray in the past. My word is still powerful. I'm not talking about something that religion. I'm not talking about something that tradition. I'm not talking about something that sermon. I'm talking about something that's got power in it. Something that'll quicken you. Something that'll give life to you. Something that will drive the evil spirits back. That will cause the demons to tremble. That will cause the evil forces to turn loose your family. I'm talking about the word is alive. The word is powerful. The word can heal. The word can say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God to salvation. It delivers. It travels. It's more powerful.
powerful. Let a local move. Pastor, let a speed it move. Hey, to meet Paul Billings. Had a seat. I'm talking about the word of God in my life. This is my, I'm not talking about some book or some sermon. I'm talking about the word. The word of God. Now, baby, what a deliverance! Now, baby, what the answer! Now. 
and let's talk to my brother Ethan, and let's talk to God here for a few minutes. The anointing is here. God is here to confirm this word. This is the pure gospel. God wants to confirm this word right now by bringing you an answer, by bringing you deliverance. God, you go online. You heal them that are sick, those that are bound, those that are oppressed. Jesus, you're the same. Pray this word. We receive this word, Lord. God, we receive a healing tonight, Lord. We receive, Lord, our deliverance tonight, God. God, Lord, we pray to my God that there's power in your word, Lord. You said your word is not a word of power, Lord, but it accomplishes everything that is set out to do, Lord. God, tonight, Lord, God, let this unction in the spirit, Lord. We receive your word, Lord. That which we need for our bodies, Lord. That what we need for our spirit, for our minds, my God. We don't need hands laid on you. Just receive this word. Receive this anointing. That's here on the earth. Lord, I know who is the Emperor. I command this word, this anointing, to heal, to deliver, to draw back, to pull from you. In the name of Jesus, we receive your word, Lord. God, we let it go to the, my God, the bones, my God. We let it go to our spirits, my God. God, you said your word is like a sharp two-edged sword, my God. No, we know your word is able to go and man came for it. God, we receive your word, Lord. God, I accept it, Lord. I accept my deliverance, my God. I accept, my God, my healing, Lord. I accept, Lord, my God, for you to move in my situation, for you to move in my circumstance, for you to move in my household, Lord, in my family, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God, I accept it. God, Lord, I receive it. Oh, Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. God, Lord, we know the power, Lord, is in your word, Lord. And you release your word tonight, God. Lord, we reach out, Lord, and we simply accept it, Lord. God, like the centurion, Lord. God, Lord, he accepted it. God, we accept it tonight, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we don't fight, God, we don't resist. God, we don't try to figure it out in our mind. God, we don't try, Lord, to, my God, to let our intellect get in the way, Lord. But God, we simply receive it. Lord, we give you permission, Lord, to go into, my God, our household, Lord. God, we give you, my God, the authority, Lord, to go inside of our lives, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, oh, Lord, touch my life, Lord. Let this word touch my life. Let this word touch my heart, Lord. Let this word, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, in Jesus' name, Lord, let it go deep into our spirits, Lord. Let this word find its perfect place in our hearts, Lord. Let this word, Lord, where are all steps, God. Let this word, my God, in the name of Jesus, drive out the devil. Drive out Satan, Lord. Drive out the infirm spirit. Drive out Lord, that which you haven't planted, you said one man slept here and he so cares. But Lord, your word is powerful enough to go in there, Lord, and move out those tears, Lord. Your word is powerful enough to go in my God in my life, Lord. You know, who there is a plant that you didn't plant, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. God, let this word, Lord, like lightning, Satan, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive it tonight. In the name of Jesus. God, I receive this tonight, Lord. Oh, Lord. I receive my healing, Lord. For my mind, Lord. My God, I receive health for my mind, God. I receive healing for my body, Lord. God, I receive deliverance, my God, for my soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we 